Alrighty, here we are, Kirby's Dream Land on the original Game Boy. Coming at you in one solid half hour. Here we are, stage one, the Green Greens. Obviously an iconic theme for most platformers is to have, like, your green hill zone, your lush lands, whatever you want to call it. And Kirby is no different, as you can see. You know, one aspect that I wasn't expecting playing this game was falling in love with the music. I, I just didn't expect this game to have such solid music, especially for 8-bit, which don't get me wrong, okay? I enjoy me some 8-bit music, okay? But I honestly, I prefer 16-bit just a little bit more. Uh, nothing against 8-bit music, it's just I feel that 16-bit music is a lot more... It's a lot closer to a proper composed... Or... Not composure, but composition. And a lot of times, 8-bit... 8-bit sometimes it sounds like really good music, like here. But sometimes it just kind of feels like noises. It doesn't really, you know, sound like anything. Which I have a similar complaint of dubstep. That's for that's for a different video. <laughs> different video altogether. I have a friend who loves dubstep. I, quite frankly, I don't get it, but to each their own. If you enjoy dubstep, you enjoy dubstep, and you should keep enjoying dubstep. You know, one another thing about this game that I I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, I haven't looked it up. Uh, I'll probably leave, like, a thing in the description. Um, I, I couldn't figure out if this game has a color palette of some sort, because usually when you play a game on, like, a, um, a Super Game Boy or on a um, Game Boy Color, it'll have, like, options for palettes. Um, and this just doesn't have that. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why. I wonder if, like, maybe just... When they were making the game, it was maybe so early on in the Game Boy. I, I don't remember what year this game came out. Um, I, I think it was like 91, 92, so... Maybe? I do know that uh, Kirby's Adventure, which uh, I have a copy of, I do know that that game was, like, tail end of the NES. There was basically, I think, like, Wario's Woods was basically all that, that really came after it that was published by Nintendo. Uh, maybe Mega Man 6 uh, was, was after that. I think Mega Man 6 was 94? 95? In the U.S., anyways. So yes, uh, any Kirby fan is going to recognize this. I believe that this guy is in every Kirby game. I could be wrong. Uh, I have no idea what, what its name is. Other than this game, the only Kirby game I've ever really played was um, Nightmare in Dreamland on the Game Boy Advance. This is a series that has basically subsisted almost entirely on its uh, mobile exploits. You had the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance games. I think there was a Game Boy Color game. Like, you have Kirby's Adventure, which is the NES game, of course. And that's where Kirby gets his power-stealing ability, uh, which is what makes Kirby unique. It's just crazy to think that the first game doesn't have that. But this game is unique in that you're sucking up villains uh, and spitting them out. Spitting them back out of each other. You're, you're fighting fire with fire. Which is a cool concept. And you can tell that they really wanted to expand on it. I, I wonder if they had the idea to do it in this, but they just... 
the Game Boy maybe just didn't have the processing power, they couldn't figure out how to do it on the Game Boy or something? I, I don't know. That'd be, that'd be an interesting question for an interview with Sakurai. Yeah, this guy, I've noticed he doesn't really go past the, um, what's it called, the little, like, overhang. I mean, you're fighting him. This game literally has boos, but they don't shy away from you. There are two power-ups I found. I don't know if there's more. I think there's really only the two, and they both do the same thing. Just one functions while you're, you know, walking and running around, and the other functions when you're, um, what's it called, uh, inflated, floating, whatever. Uh, which, speaking of, you'll see me sometimes inflate and start floating around. Um, and you'll see me doing it at a time where it just doesn't make sense for me to do it, and that's because my D-pad on my Xbox One controller that I was using to record this, because while I do have the cartridge, I don't have, like, a Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo to, like, record the game on, so I had to emulate it, of course. But there's... There's a weird thing going on with the D-pad for that controller, where whenever I press right or left, it, it also doubles for up, which is just really weird. And it really only happens on the Game Boy emulator I use. I wonder if it's the emulator I use, if I should like, try out a different one, try out, you know. I, I'm using one that's like 12 years old now, because it, it's just been so reliable and consistent. Whereas, I, I, I've seen too many emulators just not be consistent. And, quite frankly, I, I don't like updating things. And there is one of my several deaths in the video. I, I did cut out my game over. Uh, it doesn't happen here. It happens when I'm fighting King DDD at the very end. I just, I just wasn't expecting King Dedede to be such a, you know, boss. It kind of just came out of nowhere, because all the other fights were, frankly, piss easy. Like, this one was only difficult because it just confused me on the best way to go about dealing with it. But once I got the hang of it, it, it was super easy, and you'll see during the boss rush, you'll see what I'm talking about, where I just completely demolished this guy, no problem because I figured out how to, you know, game the system on him, basically. Overall, this game's not very hard. I mean, for fuck's sake, I, I cut out, like, six minutes of video. <laughs> like, like the game is not that hard. It's, it's actually kind of insane how easy the game is at times. But I don't hold that against it because this is an original Game Boy game. So... Being easy and something quick that you could play on, like, a car ride is what those games subsisted off of. So, I think that it's perfectly fine for the game that it is. I don't know how much this game was at retail. I paid about $25 for it four or five years ago. I don't know what the game runs for now. I bought it, I bought it off of, it's the same guy that I bought Kirby's Adventure from, uh, I, I bought it from a guy that, uh, he actually, like, plays and enjoys games and wants people to play and enjoy games, he's not a collector, and so, you know, he kinda just, basically, he, every game I've ever gotten from him has been, like, a fair price, I feel. Like, I've never felt gypped from anything I've bought from them. Of course, there's also a lot of stuff I've bought from them that I just have never played yet. And <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to cover some of those, because I kind of want to use 
these videos on the channel to kind of work through some of my backlog. I've had games on my backlog for fucking years that I've just never touched, that I really want to play, but I've just never had an excuse to in any capacity. And I think, I, honestly, it's kind of dumb to need an excuse to play it. Like, just, it's entertainment. When you have the time, you just play it. But, you know, there's always, there's always another game that I want to play. There's always a different game. You know, I'm not, I'm not always... I'm not always wanting to play the same, or not the same, but I'm not always wanting to play one kind of game, you know? Like, I mean, I, I'm recording a separate game at the same time of doing this video, because um, Mega Man is already finished. Mega Man's already finished at the time of recording this. Well, there's three parts. I think, I think it's visible that there's three parts, and that, that's because I have them set as premieres, but I'm already recording the next game after that, and I basically recorded this because I want to do two series at the same time and kind of fill up the week a little bit more and, you know, see how that works out for me. And uh, I was kind of hoping that this would be like a two or three part series, but it wound up just being one. So I'm going to have to find another game real quick to replace this with. But, you know, it, let's just say that it is a completely different kind of game from Kirby. Unless you see Kirby differently, which I actually kind of do, because I don't know if any of you have... I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the, the web series Sonic for Hire. It, it was a pretty successful web series, all things considered. It's finished now. But Kirby in that show is fucking ridiculous. It, he becomes Skinny Kirby after a while, and Skinny Kirby will forever haunt my fucking dreams. Like, there, there is no escaping Skinny Kirby anymore. one up and some health. Yeah, the stars here, I think, are supposed to help you realize that that's water and not, like, a damage thing. I think that's what it's for. I couldn't quite figure it out. But yeah, it is water. That's what it's supposed to be. Just another reason why I... I wish there was a palette for this game. I don't know if there's like a fan palette that you can use like on an emulator. Because uh, I know that the, emu the emulator I use anyways is capable of doing that. That's a nice cold water. It is currently 85 degrees in my room. It is colder outside than it is in my room. And I think that is partly because of the electronics that I have in here that are all on and hooked up. You know, I don't know, is this game on Nintendo Switch Online with the, like, expansion pack? I don't know if it is. I haven't looked. Honestly, I probably should have looked before I emulated. Yeah, there are also times where I feel like my hitbox uh, should have been hit by things. Like, very, very much. And it just doesn't happen. Yeah, here I'm learning that you can't suck up these, like... I don't know what they're supposed to be. Floating Pikachu heads? Um, later on, I learned that you can't uh, be too close to them, because if you're too close to them, they blow up and they will damage you. And I died to one of them later on. Yeah, these guys come down on their umbrellas. I remember there's a scene where Kirby, like, 
sucks up one of the umbrellas and gets the umbrella power and then just fucking mashes a guy to death. And the guy's like screaming like, oh, it's such a beautiful day. Oh, God, why are you killing me? Why? And then Sonic gets creeped out by it and runs away. Sonic for Hire is fucking great. You, sh you guys should really go and watch it. After this video, of course. Yeah, it, it is crazy to think that, um... Because I think Sakurai is the guy that does Smash Bros. So it's crazy to think that he went from cutesy, you know, cartoon-ish kind of platformer to, you know, people punching each other off the face of existence in a multiversal flash. Ever mention how crazy the Smash Bros. lore is? Like, it just doesn't make any fucking sense like, at all. And here we are. We get some health pickups and a one up here, but right before the boss fight. level boss fight anyways. Now you saw how I got hit in the corner there, right? Phase 2 of the fight, it can't hit you in the corner, which just makes no sense to me. So the way that all of these levels work is you have the little mid-level boss, and then you have the end-of-level boss. And the end-of-level boss is just the mid-level boss, but on steroids. And... A couple of them are, you know, strong and kind of a little bit of a challenge. Some of them are just super piss easy. Phase two of this is one of the super piss easy ones. Because it, it doesn't move as fast. At least it doesn't feel like it does anyways. And I feel like it's hitbox, even though the, the sprite is larger, I feel like the hitbox is smaller. Which is just weird. say Kirby does have like that weird fever dream thing about it you know where it, it just doesn't make any goddamn sense what's going on. Ooh, sorry that was a hiccup um it, it but it's one of those things where it just most of the time it just makes no goddamn sense what the fuck is going on which I think kind of helps the series now here, I feel like you only got that power-up for the sake of getting you through this quicker. Because you have to destroy these in order to uh, get the... get to the other side. To get into the boss room. I guess this is the this is the room that you get to the boss room in. Yeah, we are getting pretty close to the end of the game here. I think really all that's left after this is just the uh, the, the King Dedede boss rush and the boss fight. This is what phase two of the eyeball is like. He does have like a little sweep. I think I I think I dodge it coming up here. By just standing in the corner. Yeah, see it I just dodged it by going to the corner. You couldn't do that in phase one. 
there, you know, I take care of them. I only have one, one bit of health left, though. And that's, that's going to come into play right on the first instance of, of this next level. I like that there's like a little cutscene very, very reminiscent of, like, Mega Man with Dr. Wily, you know, uh, flying into his castle at the end of each game. Spoilers for some of those, but yes, those aren't really some other guy. It's always Wily in classic Mega Man. Just like how it's always Sigma in Mega Man X until Mega Man X becomes the villain. That was when I realized that it's not just a boss rush, you actually have to go through a bit of a level as well. And when you pick up these other Kirby's, Kirby clones, Kirby puppets, I, I, I don't know what the fuck they're supposed to be, but when you pick them up, it eliminates every other enemy on the, on the screen. So, yeah, so here we are, taking down the boss, and this boss is the exact same. There, there's no variance with him at all. I remember him being the exact same fight in Nightmare in Dreamland. Yeah, this game also has a weird thing where if you... I should have gotten hit there. But it's one of those weird things where if you fall from too far, you get punished, and you uh, get stunned for a few seconds, which is just... It's weird to think about a game that has, like, infinite flying and no fall damage, that it would punish you uh, for falling. But it also makes sense. There has to be a sight. There has to be a, you know, a, a negative to doing things. Yeah. Side effect, that's what I was looking for. go. Dying again. <laughs> yeah, sadly, sadly, this game is just too short. You know, if it, it, if it was maybe one stage longer, I, I would have felt a little bit more satisfied. I don't feel dissatisfied, though. Like, I definitely, I want more, is the thing. If I, if I was, if I was dissatisfied, I, I wouldn't want more, you know? I wouldn't have finished the game, I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't, if I didn't like it. This game's actually quite good, uh, all things considered. So basically, the easiest way to do this is to not attack him on the top or bottom level, and instead drop, grab the thing and drop down to the next level, and then if he comes on your level or the level below you, then you want to drop down or jump up, wait for him to pass, shoot him in the back. And right there is where I learned that if you're too close to them, you will die. Yeah, 
you can see, I, I, I do know that if you fall too far, too fast, that it will stun you. So I do stop myself from just falling continuously. I also don't know if I'm falling down into a pit or not, so I don't want to just continuously fly downwards, you know? So here we are again, back with the eyeball. And it's a little bit harder this time because he's a little bit faster. His pattern is... It's like it's on two times speed. Have, have you guys ever, like, played, like, an NES game or a Game Boy game on an emulator and just, like, set it to be an uncapped frame rate and just let it go wild? I know, I know some games are just completely break and just stop stop rendering entirely when you do that. It's, it's funny to me. Some games, some games are made just impossible to complete, but then there are other games where it's like they play way better. Uh, which you wouldn't think so, but uh, uh, yeah, that is true. And right there, I cut past my game over right there. I think there's still one more death to DDD that happens. Which, by the way, I do want to talk about this. I played this on an emulator. I have an idea that I think would just make so much sense. Nintendo should release an official emulator for their old systems and sell first-party games for five, ten bucks. I think it would make a lot of money. It would make them a lot of fucking money. And then they could sell, like, an official, you know, Nintendo cartridge reader where you can plug in your old NES or Game Boy games into your computer uh, without the capability of ripping them. Of course, programmers are going to program it to do that anyways, but, you know, so that you could play, like, your old collection. Like, say, say you have Top Gun on the NES and you want to play it for some fucking reason. It would be nice to have the option to actually officially play it on something that isn't 40 years old. I guess there are, like, the systems on a card that you can get, but those just aren't the same. I would much rather play on an emulator than on, like, a, a cheap Alibaba, or not Alibaba, <laughs> AliExpress, you know, system on a card piece of shit sold by Soldier Boy, you know? So anyways, this fight, basically, the, the, the way that I figured it out was, it just dodge the hammer attacks completely and go for when he jumps. I don't know if there's like a specific way to trigger the jump attack, but I do know that there's like another way to, you can like feign the hammer and force him to attack with the hammer early and step back and take it, but I, I wasn't having any fucking luck with that at all. So I just didn't bother. And instead, I just opted for flying over his head. And I got pretty lucky, all things considered, on this run. Like, right there, any other game, I would have gotten hit right there on the edge of the hammer. I think he jumps here. Oh no, he just runs at me again. Yeah, he, kno he knows that he's knocking on death's door right here. There we go. That is the end of Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy. Overall, a pretty fun game. Uh, I have very little complaints. I think the music is great. I think the sprite art is phenomenal. Here he becomes a giant fucking balloon and takes off with the castle, which is just hilarious. Yeah, uh, 
I don't know that I will play this game again anytime soon, but I do recommend it for any fan of, you know, platformers and retro games. But I'm going to let these com er, these credits play out without any more commentary from here on, so if you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all later.